Did you know that before the preeminence and modernization of the internal combustion engine, electric vehicles not only sold better than gas-powered vehicles, but they also held many land speed and distance records? Most notable among these was the breaking of the 100 km or 62 mile per hour barrier by Belgian race car driver Camille Genazzi on his rocket-shaped vehicle known as the La Jaume Cantante. The first electric car produced in the United States was built in 1891 by William Morrison in Des Moines, Iowa. His model was a six-passenger wagon car capable of carrying passengers up to a top speed of 23 kilometers or 14 miles per hour. At the dawn of the automotive industry, around 1895 or so, electric vehicles had quite a few comparative advantages over other types of vehicles. Firstly, they were similar to steam-powered cars in that they did not require any gear shifting, making for an easier driving experience. Steam vehicles, however, would take as long as 45 minutes to warm up before you could drive them, and the electric cars, on the other hand, could start up and go pretty much immediately. And compared to gas-powered vehicles, electric vehicles did not have the vibration, noise, and smell associated with them that gas cars did. By 1912, many homes were wired for electricity, enabling a surge in electric car popularity. So much so that by that time, nearly 34,000 electric cars were registered in the United States, making up a total of 38% of the entire automobile industry. In fact, there was talk by one of the world's most famous industrialists and quintessential car men, Henry Ford himself, about developing cheap electric cars as early as 1896. You see, Ford worked as an engineer for Thomas Edison at the Detroit Edison Illuminating Company before his founding of the Ford Motor Company in 1903. The two men actually had a great friendship that extended well into their later years, going so far as exchanging lavish gifts, going on camping adventures, and even owning adjacent homes together. After enjoying a bounty of success in the early 20th century, the electric car began to lose its market share from the 19-teens on. Their limited operating range, as well as a lack of charging infrastructure, proved disastrous when compared to the increasing efficiencies of the gas-powered vehicle. Not only that, but due to a rapid increase in the quality and distance of road infrastructure in the United States, consumer demand began shifting. Also, by the 1920s, worldwide discoveries of large petroleum reserves led to the wide availability of affordable gasoline, which made gas-powered cars cheaper to operate over longer distances. Three other futuristic innovations in the gas-powered car led to the proverbial nail in the coffin for the electric car. The first was the invention of the electric starter by Charles Kettering in 1912, which eliminated the need for the dreaded hand crank starting method. The second was the invention of the muffler by Milton and Marshall Reeves, which significantly decreased the noise and overall vibration of the gasoline-powered car. And the third and final nail in the coffin for the electric car at the time was the creation of the assembly line by Henry Ford and his top men at the Ford Motor Company. And virtually overnight, a comparable electric car sold for more than double the price of a gasoline-powered Model T. And due to that lack of innovation in the electric car market, most electric car manufacturers stopped production or went out of business entirely. From the 1920s on, the electric vehicle went into a sort of hibernation mode, becoming popular for random applications where total driving range was not really an issue. For instance, forklifts were electrically powered when they were initially introduced in 1923, and milk floats, which were specifically designed to deliver fresh milk, remained electrically powered throughout the 20th century. Electrically powered golf carts, also known as the OGEV, were introduced during this time. But decades passed without any major revival in the use of electric cars. Due to environmental concerns, governments around the world began requiring auto manufacturers to experiment with electric vehicle technologies, albeit very minor, and throughout the 1960s and up to the 1990s, many limited-run battery electric concept cars appeared around the globe. Let's quickly take a look at a few of them. The Henny Kilowatt was one such electric vehicle introduced in the United States in 1960 with a top speed of 60 miles per hour and a total driving range of 60 miles. However, only 47 units were sold and most of these were to electric companies. Another electric vehicle, the Scottish Aviation Scam, was developed in the United Kingdom in 1965. 
It featured a top speed of 36 miles or 58 kilometers per hour and a total driving range of 26 miles or 42 kilometers. However, only 12 of these were produced. Then, in 1967, one of the most futuristic looking electric cars, aptly named the AMC Amatron or Electron, was created. This vehicle is significant because it was one of the first times regenerative braking was used in an electric vehicle. And finally, on July 31, 1971, the Lunar Rover Vehicle, first deployed on the Apollo 15 mission, became the first manned electric car to drive on the moon. The Moon Buggy was developed by Boeing and featured a DC motor at each wheel and a pair of 36-volt non-rechargeable batteries. Interestingly enough, the three moon buggies that were brought to the moon during Apollo 15, 16, and 17 in 1971 and 1972 respectively were left there and still remain on the surface of the moon today. Small-scale production of random one-off electric vehicles continued through the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, but none of them appeared to hold the public's interest or gain any substantial sales metrics for that matter. This was due to their continued high cost, limited range, and outright dominance of the gasoline-powered car. To find out what happens next in the history of the electric vehicle, including the story of the GM EV1 that was made popular in the documentary Who Killed the Electric Car, and the rise of Tesla, be sure to tune in for part two of the history of the electric car.